Hi, everyone. This is Learn with Optimizer. My name is Mari Breilin, and I'm part of the Optimizer customer success team. Today, we will be talking about Microsoft Ads and the solutions that Optimizer has for Microsoft campaign management. Uh, we'll be going through some of the uh, monitoring tools, some of the tracking tools, uh, auditing, also optimizations in terms of budget, in terms of building custom optimizations today. Um, and I'll jump over to the agenda just uh, right now. Um, and before we actually go and, and talk about the tools themselves, I wanted to spend just a couple of minutes uh, talking about Microsoft in general. Um, we kind of know that all advertisers, almost all advertisers advertise on Google. Google is the market leader, of course. And when we talk to advertisers, uh, what we hear is basically their agendas are full. Uh, your agendas are full. You have so much on your plate that even the idea of bringing in another platform to manage, adding that to the list of tasks to do is just not very attractive. Even though Microsoft um, has a wide audience, you could actually expand your reach. You could reach new audiences that Google just doesn't have. Um, Microsoft is a big player, and especially in North, North America, but in also um, other places, say France, for example. Um, and because of the competition being less than uh, in, in Google, the CPCs also tend to be lower. So there are some opportunities there, but we understand that it's just, you know, it, it can be a lot to, to manage several platforms. Um, that's why we're here for, of course. Um, getting started with Microsoft is extremely easy. So if you already have a campaign in Google Ads or campaigns in Google Ads, there's an import function uh, that allows you to just import whatever you have in Google, Map, uh, Google Ads and, and map it in, um, in Microsoft and get started almost instantly. What happens after uh, is that you basically have two options. You can um, leave the campaigns there running in Microsoft Ads and schedule an import from Google Ads. What this means is that any changes that you make in Google Ads will be reflected in Microsoft Ads as well. Um, this may not be the best way to manage campaigns in, on both platforms, because what this means is that if you change um, your budgets in Microsoft Ads, they will be reset to the previous ones, the previous one, um, the next time the import runs, if you have that uh, schedule in place. So actually, the better way to kind of go about this is treat these as separate platforms, even though they resemble each other a lot, they have the same similar structures and similar metrics, etc. Um, because the audiences are different, because they just, you know, uh, the data is different. And to help with that campaign management uh, and, and avoiding manual work, we have a few different um, tools that you can use, different solutions that will are there to, to help you. So we'll, to, uh, we'll be going through some of uh, the performance alerts today to make sure that you're uh, informed, you know what's going on, uh, you'll get alerted if performance starts trending in the wrong direction. Uh, we'll be talking about account auditing. It's a new feature for Microsoft Ads we've added recently that will help you kind of just stay on top of the account, uh, get a health check, maybe find optimization opportunities. Um, We'll also be talking about budgets, how to track budgets, but also avoid overspending. Um, and then at the end of this session, what we'll do is have a look at a tool called Rule Engine, which is basically optimizers, rule-based tool to create custom uh, sequences using if and then statements. So there's a lot to discover today. Let's, let's uh, get started. Uh, for those of you, probably most of you, um, who have uh, used Optimizer before, you know that this pro dashboard here is where you get started. This is your starting view. Um, if you don't have Microsoft Ads accounts linked to Optimizer yet, you can simply just head over to the link another account page uh, right here or go through the settings section and link accounts to Optimizer. 
you'll find your Microsoft Ads accounts under their own tab right here. And you can also star them, add them as favorites. What I've done here is basically add, uh, I've added a couple of accounts that I really want to uh, keep track of as my favorite accounts. What this means is that when I um, save this as my default view, these are, this, is, this is the view that loads up when I uh, log into Optimizer. And um, starring the account is also a great idea if you want to make sure that if anything goes wrong, if there anything uh, goes wrong with the with the performance, it starts uh, declining or there are drastic changes from one day to the other, you will get a so-called anomaly alert. Uh, adding the account as, as your favorite account is all you need to do. Um, Optimizer tracks the performance of cost, impressions, and clicks by default without you having to do anything else. And uh, say your impressions drop from normal levels to close to zero from one day to the other, and you don't have ad schedules or something else that could be uh, could uh, explain this change, you will get a one-time email alert, an anomaly alert. There is a way to track other metrics as well and, and keep track of their, uh, if they're trending down or, uh, or up in, in, in the case of cost, for example. Uh, you can do that at the account level right here on the pro dashboard. Just to simply hover over uh, any metric that you want to track. You'll see uh, the performance over the past four weeks, and you can uh, add an alert right here. This is at the account level. If you want to do something a little bit more granular, just manage your alerts, create new ones, um, you can head over to the active alerts section of the pro dashboard or the insights section and alerts both will take you to the same place first if you have any triggered alerts they will be showing here right now we don't have any um, if if there were any you would see a little bit more information as to why that alert was triggered um, and, and kind of how to investigate that and the cool thing is that you can direct these alerts to different apps as well. So if you have Microsoft Teams, if you have Slack in use, you can, instead of getting email alerts, you can get alerts to these uh, third-party apps. Creating a new alert is basically a very straightforward process. You can, uh, you can create an alert for a single metric. You can track conversions. You can track average CPC, whatever that is. Um, you can also group together budgets and track budgets together. Um, I'll go there just in a second. The single account alert uh, basically helps us stay on top of performance. Um, say you wanted to create an alert um, in bulk for all your accounts or all your Microsoft Ads accounts. All you need to do is just select the Microsoft accounts. I'll just select all three at a time and Instead of doing it at the, at the account level, maybe I would like to track the performance of search campaigns. So I'll just select campaign type here and search. And now what I can do is uh, select the, the, the metric. Because we're tracking three different accounts, campaigns, uh, average CPCs together, it's possible that there are different targets. So we're not necessarily sure what the target should be um, or it may vary and that's okay what you can do is just keep the automatic option on there what this means is that optimizer looks at the historical data of those campaigns and and creates a target builds a target based on that historical data you don't have to specify it you can specify it if you if you have a common target um, it's okay as well. And in this case, it will be a static target. And then, then we'll ask you to allow a little bit of deviation. So you, you won't get alerted for every single little fluctuation. 10, 15, 20% deviation is pretty, uh, pretty normal here. Um, and then you can select who will be notified should this alert get triggered. 
So that's a really quick way to just uh, get status updates, know where you are, if, if performance starts trending down or uh, up. Then the next uh, report audit that we would like to uh, we would like to run here is the uh, PPC policy and audits. It's under the insight section right here. You can also find, find it on the account uh, dashboard. Um, it's basically a mix between a reporting tool and, and an insight tool. And, and it allows you to break down your account into individual components, individual scopes, and, and, um, and audit the elements that are under each scope. Um, each scope gets a color-coded um, letter grade right here. So it's easy to spot if there's anything that needs your attention. So the, some of the items are also neutral. So, you know, it's not, new, it's not negative, it's not positive. It's just there for reporting purposes. Um, we can just have a look at the report right here, have a look at if there's anything that we might want to investigate further under the ad groups. There are ad groups that have no active keywords. That might be something that we need to look into. Why is that? Um, do we have to do a, a kind of a quick hygiene uh, cleanup on the account? Um, we also have uh, several ad groups that have duplicate ads. Are they competing with each other? We might want to look into that um, and just go through the sections here. Um, and if you expand any of the audited elements, you will get a little bit of more information as to why it got the letter grade it got. Um, for example, here, um, a fairly high percent of keywords have an average expected CTR score. Um, and, and that's why it got the, the letter grade B. Um, we'll be adding actionable items here in the future. So keep an eye on those. Uh, right now you can use this the way you want. So, so you can take these uh, kind of um, take this further the way you the way you want to and optimize um, the audited items the best way you see possible. You can also edit this. Uh, so if there are any elements here that don't really make sense, you don't want to include them in the audits, uh, or maybe there's something that's missing, uh, that's okay. You can edit it by going through the insight section and PPC policy and audits and, and an editor will open up. If I collapse all of these items here, we can see that these are the scopes uh, that are available and under each available scope, you have different elements to choose from. Now you can simply disable or enable them and make the audits as relevant as possible for yourself. Once you've, you're ready with this process, you can just simply save it for later. You can have as many different audits as you would like to. They're all available through any of the uh, linked Microsoft accounts you have. Um, you can save it for later. You can uh, run it right now, uh, or you can schedule it as well. Uh, if, you, if you choose to schedule a, an audit, you can say, for example, send me a link to this audit uh, on a monthly basis and Optimizer will email you a link. So it'll get that monthly health check to your email. Great, so let's move on to talk about budgets. Um, Optimizer has a couple of different budget related tools, one for single account budget optimization and another for um, Cross, across account budget optimizations. And we're looking at the but optimized budgets across platforms tool right here. Um, if you've never used this tool before, you will be first asked to create a client. A, a client is basically any combination of accounts from any of the supported platforms. Um, so you can, if you have a client that runs ads on Microsoft Ads, on Google Ads, maybe Facebook, and you want to have a, 
have them all together in one place where you can manage those budgets and, and reallocate them, um, you can create a client for, for that set of accounts. Once you've done that, the next step is to create budget groups. So you have your clients and now you want to make um, separate the budgets into different budget groups. They can be priority budgets in one budget group. You can have your Microsoft in one. You can have your Google Ads in one, whatever combination that works for you. Um, each budget group uh, basically uh, gets a target. So you can choose from all the different budgets that are available under the, the accounts that form the clients that you created in the previous stage. Um, and then you will be asked to give a target for the selected budgets. Why a target? So that you can uh, keep track of the spending. That is a, this is a total target, this is an aggregated target across all the selected budgets. Um, and you can get status updates throughout the month when 50%, 75%, 90% of the budget is, is spent. You'll get a, you'll get a notification. Um, and you can also avoid overspending. By selecting the pause campaigns when their aggregated cost exceeds the target budget, the system will start checking um, several times an hour, even several times an hour, the spend and compare it to your target. And once it's close to that target, the associated campaigns will be paused to avoid overspend. Now, you may want to also re-enable those same campaigns at the beginning of the new budget cycle, at the beginning of a new month. And for that, you can just select the re-enable function here. Uh, the tool won't re-enable anything that it didn't pause. So no worries there. Only the, the, the pause budgets, pause campaigns, um, that the actual optimized budgets across platforms to a pause will be re-enabled. There can be several budget groups, as I mentioned, um, and you can now keep uh, start tracking that. Once you have your budget group created, you will get to this view. You can um, see your monthly target here. You can see how much spend there is right now, where you are in terms of pacing and how much more would be required to actually hit the target. Um, uh, based on the, the performance metrics that you can manage here, you can start shifting budgets around. Um, increasing budgets, decreasing budgets, whatever works for you. There's also um, the get optimization suggestions um, button here. If you're familiar with the single account version of this tool, you know that there are optimizer recommended reallocation suggestions available. And that is something that we're building right now for the optimized budgets across platforms tool as well. It's right now in beta. Let us know if you want to be part of the beta testing group once uh, it is released. Once you're happy with your new budget amount, you can just simply uh, apply budget changes. Uh, the new, new amounts from this column will be made live in real time. Um, and the system keeps tracking the spend uh, according to your settings. Moving on to talk a little bit about custom optimizations. Um, the, the tool, the most versatile tool Optimizer actually has is called the Rule Engine. Uh, you may be familiar with it already, uh, you may not. So for those who um, who have not played around with Rule Engine too much, just as a quick refresher, quick introduction, uh, Rule Engine works with if then else statements. And you can, if you have any routines, if you're using certain parameters always when, I don't know, uh, finding uh, keyword negative keyword ideas from your search query report, and you're always looking at cost, you're always looking at uh, no conversions, etc. Um, you can actually take those routines and 
recreate them in, in rule engine and start automating that process and start scaling it uh, so you can do the, the same work uh, in a fraction of the time. Uh, there are a couple of ways to get started with a rule engine. The easiest way is to just use the add strategy button right here. Uh, you will be presented with a few different uh, optimizer recommended strategies. There, these are different goals and under the goals there are uh, pre-built instant strategies that you can, um, you can start modifying and tweak. Say we wanted to uh, get an idea of those search queries that used to drive traffic to our ads, but no longer do for some reason, or vice versa. Um, previously, they didn't drive any traffic, impressions were zero, and now um, there has been a search and, and new terms uh, are used and, and your ads are triggered by new uh, new search terms. And we wanted to get a report. What we can use is um, the new and declining search queries report. Um, there's a quick explanation as to what this strategy does. Um, you can select it. If you select it, you have two options. You can get the full control. You can go to the editor. You can see the if and then statements. You can see the full funnel. And, and make tweaks, change things, delete things, add things, whatever that might be, and then uh, generate the suggestions, see if there are any search queries that meet your criteria. Or you can select the show me optimizers suggestions, which is the first section here. Um, this means that you're going to skip that logic page, go directly to the suggestions and um, you won't be able to automate it, you won't be able to tweak it directly, but you will be able to use kind of as, a, as any other optimizer tool or report. I generally speaking recommend the, the second option right here because it allows you um, to, to actually make changes and automate things. I won't be going deeper into this strategy right now. Uh, I wanted to walk you through the flow but I, what, what I did want to show you is actually a strategy that I created from scratch, because that's the other option. You can create something from completely scratch. Um, this is kind of replicating the strategies for uh, automated bidding. If you're familiar with, with the strategies for automated bidding and target CPA that we have for Google Ads in the optimization section, this is kind of similar to that. Um, it's called the Optim Optimized Target CPA. It's at the campaign level. And let's go to the editor. So this is basically the editor, the if and then statements. Um, and Rule Engine works as a funnel. Uh, the funnel consists, or the strategy consists of different rules. In this case, there are two rules. One where impression share is lost and we should increase target CPA and another where uh, there's a low CPA already and we should decrease the target. And both rules have conditions in them. The first conditions um, are target CPA is greater than zero. There is some impression share lost at the campaign level and the campaign has converted more than three times in the last 30 days. If all of this is true, then take action. If any of the campaigns don't, or if some of the campaigns don't meet that set of criteria, they will be analyzed by the second rule here. And we're basically saying, if target CPA is greater than zero, if there's not much impression share lost, um, if the campaign is converting, and if the cost per conversion, the actual cost per conversion is, is significantly below the, uh, the target that the campaign has, then take action. Right now, the action is just including a report, but we could definitely have another action here as well. Instead of a report, we might want to say, hey, um, let's increase the target CPA. In that case, we can uh, edit the action here, modify target CPA, increase it, 
and we can say, for example, increase it by 10%. Because my idea is to run this on automation or semi-automation, I want to set certain uh, limits here as well to make sure that the, the target is not increased too much. It doesn't exceed uh, the maximum threshold. And for that, we can just say never increase it over 300. And now we have the new action here. Both sites are editable, so you can add different uh, metrics, different criteria, different performance uh, metrics and attributes there. Once you're ready, you can just view suggestions and the system will analyze your entire account and show you, uh, in this case, the campaigns that uh, match the criteria. We can see that um, there were two campaigns that met one of the set of criteria, meaning the first rule, there, are, there is impression share lost at the campaign level, but a good number of conversions so we might want to consider increasing that target CPA just a little bit, basically to signal to Google, I'm willing to pay a higher price in exchange for more impression share and hopefully more conversions. This can be just applied as a one-time thing. That's fine, perfectly fine. Um, but the recommendation here is to start automating things. So you can start basically laying in your automations, let the machine, let the technology do the heavy lifting. So you don't have to come here and run this strategy and, and kind of spend time doing even that. Uh, what you can do is just automate the strategy to run, let's say every month on the 1st and the 15th and send you a notification with a link to this view here. Uh, when campaigns uh, that match the criteria are found. If no campaigns meet the criteria, your email won't be spammed. Uh, so no worries there. You'll just get a notification if there are results that you should be aware of. And over time, when you already know that the strategy is doing exactly what it's supposed to, you can also select apply changes. What this means is that um, instead of you manually authorizing these changes, you will just get a notification, hey, these and these uh, campaigns were changed, these were the changes that were made, um, and then you can find it in your optimization history and your change history in, uh, in Microsoft Ads. So thank you so much for taking the time to have a look at some of the Microsoft Ads features. I do recommend visiting our help center. We have more material there. Um, also feel free to explore the interface. Um, you will find all, all the Microsoft Ads compatible tools when you select the Microsoft Ads account and then you will see um, the menu and there you can, you can do many more things. Of course, you can build reports. Um, you can set up other automations, you can create your own, uh, own strategies, um, do analysis, etc. I hope uh, this was useful. Should you have any questions, let us know, send an email to support at optimizer.com or write to us through the chat box in the interface and we'll get back to you and we will be more than happy to help you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.